Hello, I'm Bernard Dan. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology, and I'm having this conversation with Sarah Foley. Hello, Sarah. Uh, hi, Bernard. So, Sarah, tell us about your background. So, I'm a physiotherapist, and I work for a not-for-profit organisation in Geelong in regional Australia. But the BOBAS approach is really central to, to what you do, is it? It is, yes. It's been, uh, for my 25 years of practice, that's been one of the key knowledge areas that I've drawn upon. And have you you seen the concept evolve very much uh, over those years? Very much. Um, when I reflect back on my first training program that I did, it looked very different to what it looks like now. There was still obviously the core principles. I mean, the Bobaths were always about having functional outcomes for children in a holistic approach to looking at the child and their family. What we know now in terms of neurosciences and development has changed considerably so what they were teaching 30 or 40 years ago is quite different to what we are teaching now. In her editorial, Margaret points to some possible misunderstanding surrounding the very name Bobas. Do you experience the same? Yes, indeed. I think, as we know, there's been a lot written in the last three or four years around Bobas and what that actually represents, and we've been significantly influenced by that. Originally, I think there was quite a bit of defensiveness around that, the editorials that were published. But I think what we need to do now is move on and accept the criticisms that have been laid at Bobar therapy in terms of it not having an effective evidence base and actually draw upon what are in fact its strengths. So I think there's a time now where we can perhaps reflect on whether Bobar is the best way of describing what we do because I think it is, has connotations that we should honour. Heritage is no doubt to be recognised, but we do much more than what the Bobars themselves did 30 years ago. So how would you answer Margaret's question, what is the future? I think, um, I think Margaret made some really good points. I think one of the things is that she was really questioning about whether we should use the Bobas name and, and I think perhaps into the future that needs to be decided. I think the future is really about trying to have a consensus around what should be taught on the courses. We should be reviewing a theoretical basis of the Bobas concept, mm -hmm. perhaps even changing the name. Should we not necessarily use Bobath. What we tend to use in Australia is refer to our training as a clinical reasoning model and focus mm -hmm. more upon that. Um, I don't think we should be defensive. You know, I think mm -hmm. the advantage of this current discussion is that it's out in the open about what is the best thing that we should be doing for children and their families who are living with cerebral palsy. I've got to acknowledge there are lots of different interventions. Mm -hmm. Some are named and perhaps that's been ultimately a hindrance to have the name because people bring their own interpretations to that, either the name of Bobath or the name of NDT. Maybe we need to mm -hmm. stick to what we're actually teaching on the courses and I think if you looked at our curriculum in particular, it would stand up to rigorous scrutiny as a, as a quality course mm -hmm. that uh, produces graduates who are competent in working with children with cerebral palsy. Yeah, this is a, a, definitely an excellent way to build a future, this, this focus on teaching uh, as much as on practice. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sarah. I think this very nicely highlighted uh, those ideas. Many thanks indeed. Okay, thank you, Ernest.